just 13 months later. Now, President Biden wants Congress to raise the debt limit yet again without a single sensible change to how government spends your hard-earned money. None. Does that sound responsible to you? Now, if you had teenagers and they spent past the limit on a credit card, yes, you pay for it. But, now this is important, you don't allow their bad spending habits to continue. You change their behavior so it never happens again. You teach them to be sensible, responsible, and accountable adults. Well, I think I speak for most Americans when I say it's time for Washington to change its behavior and act like adults. Ninety days ago, the American people chose to give Republicans power in the House of Representatives because we are committed to finding solutions that curb inflation. At its source, wasteful Washington spending. We are already changing the behavior of this government. The runaway spending of the last few years, it's over. Now we must return Washington to a basic truth. Debt matters. The debt limit is one of the most important opportunities Congress has to change course. How will we respond to determine what happens to our children and to their children in coming years and decades? The choice is clear. We can have reckless spending, or we can have responsibility. We cannot have both. We can leave our children a future with higher inflation, higher interest rates, and crushing debt, or we can leave them free to pursue happiness as God intended. What Americans want and what Republicans are fighting for is a responsible debt limit increase that puts us on a path towards a healthier economy. We will curb wasteful Washington spending to reduce inflation and return our government to fiscal sanity. We will preserve our ability to defend this nation against th threats abroad. Cuts to Medicare and Social Security, they are off the table. Defaulting on our debt is not an option. But neither is a future of higher taxes, higher interest rates, and an economy that doesn't work for working Americans. Debt limit debates have been used for nearly every successful attempt to reform federal spending in living history. Why? Because the problem only gets solved when both parties come to the table. But don't just take my word for it. Here's what then Vice President Biden said when he negotiated a debt limit increase with House Republicans in 2011. You can't govern without negotiating, he said. Those are his words. That's what his sensible standard. And House Republicans are following it now. Mr. President, it's time to get to work. Surely we both agree that the national debt is too high. Surely, we both agree that inflation hurts American families. Surely, we can trim waste and streamline programs to make them both stronger and more efficient. So let's do this. As a senator, you voted against raising the debt ceiling, Mr. President. To quote your words, your vote in 2004 was a protest of the policies that have brought us to a point and a demand that we change course. We need a different approach. No drawing lines in the sand or saying it's my way or the highway. No policy gimmicks or political games. But most of all, no blank checks for runaway spending. Just sensible, responsible solutions to our growing national debt. Now, here are mine. First, we will continue to sit down and negotiate, just as President Biden did in the past. Second, we must commit to finding common ground on a responsible debt limit increase. Finding compromise is exactly how governing in America is supposed to work. 
and exactly what the American people voted for just three months ago. Third, we must move towards a balanced budget and insist on genuine accountability for every dollar we spend. Future generations deserve nothing less. A responsible debt limit increase that begins to eliminate wasteful Washington spending and puts us on a path towards a balanced budget is not only the right place to start, it's the only place to start. My fellow Americans, I cannot stand still in the face of a growing national debt and diminishing economic opportunities. My colleagues and I in Congress were elected at this moment in time to restore your voice in Washington and to deliver the bright future you want, need, and deserve, not only for you, but for your children and their children. We will not let you down. Mr. President, congressional Republicans are ready to act, to save our country, and to make America stronger. I hope you will join us. Thank you, and God bless.